Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain the solution for problem F, one for overload, for code forces around 742, the round I tested. And in this problem we have a grid with n rows and m columns, and we have some cells which are marked, and some cells which are not. And we also have an important condition, which says that no marked cells are adjacent to the ed edge of the grid. And we want to fill each cell with a number such that every unmarked cell contains either the number 1 or 4. Every marked cell contains the sum of the numbers in all unmarked cells adjacent to it. And every marked cell contains a multiple of 5. So we need to figure out how to do this and also how to decide whether this is possible or not. After reading the statement, it is important to notice that uh, 1 plus 4, when added up, uh, are 5. And this implies that for each cell which is equal to an x, we need to have an even number of cells which are equal to 1, an even number of unmarked cells which are equal to 1, and an even number of marked cells which are equal to 4, so that we can match them 2 by 2 and we would have 5. And this also leads to the fact that whenever we see a marked cell with an odd number of neighbors, which are uh, unmarked, uh, the answer is no. So this is also a case we can check at the beginning before we start implementing the solution. I'm going to present an algorithm which uh, helps us construct the solution for this problem. And I'm also going to explain why it works. So uh, there are a few details we need to consider. So I will present it using one of the test cases in the sample. So here we go. This is the third sample test case, I think. And uh, in this test case, as you can see, we have a grid size nine by nine, where we have a bunch of axes, and we also have uh, different connected components of unmarked cells. And the reason why I mentioned the, the concept of comp connected components is that they will be quite important for this problem because we will need uh, to keep them in order to have a proper way of constructing the grid. So for this test case, we have the first connected component. So we can find those connected components obviously by doing uh, BFS in the grid. So with A I will note the first connected component. With B, I will know the second one. And with C, I will know the third one. And uh, it's important for us to find the connected components because uh, after finding them, we can link them based on some of the some of the X cells we, which we have there, so that uh, it's important to see whether the graph of the connected components uh, we generated after doing the BFS or the DFS as you did initially is uh, bipartite, which means that it can be two colored. And the reason why it's important for us to do that is that whenever we will fill the grid with ones and fours. It is important for us to not have uh, two fours which are adjacent or two ones which are adjacent, at least in some conditions. In some circumstances, it's not good for us to have two fours or two ones adjacent. So it's important for us to see whether the graph we form is too colorable. And after we checked whether the graph is too colorable, uh, the algorithm of filling the ones and fours is pretty simple. So at first we can fill the first column with whatever we want, which is either one or four. I'm going to use a one.
Then uh, for each subsequent column, we will start the uh, column with the opposite number we had in the previous column. So it will be something like 1, 4, 1, 4, and so on. And going uh, from for each column, as long as we see uh, a number which a square which is not an x, we will fill it based on whether the uh, type of the connected component uh, that square is from is different from the type of connected component the previous square which was not an x is from. So in this case, it's going to be again a four because in, they are in the same connected component. And with the b's again, it's going to be four, 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 four. And this one is going to be on one. Again, four, four, one, four. Actually, uh, the previous ones are going to be a 1 because they are from a different kind of component. And here we have a 4. Then we have a 4, a 1, a 4, and a 1. And so on. So this is going to be a 1, then a 4, then 4 is here. And 1 here, 4 and one, one. And this one is going to be a four. Uh, actually, it's going to be a one, one, four. So, and then for all of these squares, which are equal to an X, we just need to sum up the numbers in the adjacent squares and then print that answer. And also check whether the construction is also valid in terms of having uh, None, none of these squares having a sum which is not a multiple of 5 in case of the x squares. A good thing to note is that whenever we create the connected components, it's good to do the DFS uh, based on the all of the a directions. Like if we have this square here, we should have all of the directions adjacent to it checked. Uh, because it's important whenever we will have to create those connect components and also to fill out the grid. So for this one, we'll have to check all of these eight other squares instead of the four. Again, it depends on the implementation and it depends on the approach, but at least this is the approach I used. So I had to change my VFS to checking eight directions instead of four before getting accepted. And now I'm going to show the implementation. So as you can see, at first I'm doing the BFS for finding the connected components, which is again quite simple. And I'm checking here the directions, as I said earlier. And here I'm creating the graph of uh, connected components in order for us to check the uh, two coloring of the graph, whether this is possible or not. Just as a little reminder, a graph is still colored whenever it doesn't have a cycle of odd length, and which basically means that we can fill uh, the graph with uh, two different numbers so that there won't be an edge having at both of the ends the same number. And since in this problem we are dealing with one and four, it's easy to deal with one and four to check whether this is possible or not. Here we are filling the uh, numbers uh, in the grid based on the construction rule I mentioned earlier. And at the end I'm just adding up the uh, numbers for the x squares to see whether uh, this is possible or not. And again, even though my for loop is for a directions, I am only checking the four directions according to the statement. So it's important to be a bit careful whenever you are dealing with uh, those details in implementation. Uh, there can be easier solutions than what I found, but uh, for most part, uh, there should still be some small difficulties in implementation, and it's important to uh, not have too many cases or to miss any of them, because there are some cases which uh, can be missed.
if the implementation is not the proper one. If you enjoyed watching this video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel and uh, write in the comments whatever feedback you might have based on this video. And I hope you enjoyed this video and the other videos too and stay tuned uh, until the next time. Good luck, have fun and stay safe. See you later.